Born a slave in 1838 in Crawford County, Arkansas, Bass Reeves became the first black U.S. Marshal west of the Mississippi and one of the greatest heroes of the American Wild West. Owned by a man named George Reeves, Bass took his owner's surname like other slaves of the time. Bass was a well-built man, nearly six feet tall, with good manners and a good sense of humor. When the Civil War broke out in 1861, his masters ordered him to join the fight, which he did. But before long, Bass began to hear about the project to free the slaves. This was too much for him, and he simply decided to flee to Cherokee Indian Territory. He learned their language, customs, and the art of tracking. It was also an opportunity for him to develop his firearm skills, becoming very fast and accurate with a revolver. When President Lincoln proclaimed the beginning of the process to abolish slavery in 1863, Reeves, no longer considered a fugitive, left the Indian Territory and bought land near Van Buren, Arkansas, where he became a successful rancher. Married to Texas native Nellie Jenny, he was the head of a family of 11 children. All was well. Yes, but Bass's destiny was about to take a new turn. By this time, the Indian Territory had become a haven for thieves, murderers, and anyone else who wanted to escape the law. Having become a veritable lawless zone, Major General James Fleming Fagan was asked to recruit no less than 200 U.S. Marshals. One of the first was Bass Reeves, who already had a solid reputation for his extensive knowledge of the region, among other things. Clean up this cursed region and bring back its outlaws, dead or alive, had it your way. And so it was that Reeves began to make a name for himself, for his courage and his many successes in arresting and even killing many of the territory's desperados. He was always polite and courteous, but terribly effective. Any means were good enough to achieve his ends. Ambidextrous, with his two collars, he rarely missed his target. Yes. Tales of his captures became legendary. On one occasion, Reeves was pursuing two outlaw brothers near the Texas border. After devising a plan, he disguised himself as a hobo and quietly set off on foot to their mother's house. There, he explained to the old woman that he was a fugitive and that his feet hurt. Invited to a meal, the mother introduced him to her two sons, and he was grateful. And once everyone was asleep, it was early in the morning that Bass handcuffed everyone without even taking out his six-shooter, and a few days later he pocketed a reward of $5,000. One of the highlights of his career was putting one of the worst outlaws of the time, Bob Dozier, out of business. After several months of stalling, he finally cornered him on a Cherokee reservation and had to beat him in a terrible shootout on December 20, 1878. Also in 1889, Bass dismantled the horse-thieving gang, Tom Story, drawing faster than the gang's leader. Yeah, a sharpshooter, the Marshall Isle, but no. Come to think of it, the highlight of his career was having to arrest his own son, Benjamin Benny, who had been accused of murdering his wife in a fit of jealousy. So as quietly as possible, he said to his colleagues, give me the summons, I'll take care of it. Without fail, he did his duty and handed his son over to the authorities. Yeah. During his 32-year career, Bass Reeves served his country and went down in history as one of the most effective lawmen in the Far West. He participated in the arrest of over 3,000 men and women for violating the federal laws of the territory. As for the 14 men he killed during his service, Reeves always said he never shot a man other than to save his own life. Reeves was finally discharged in 1907. As an African American, he could no longer continue to hold his position as U.S. Marshal and serve his country under the new segregationist laws. Because yes, Bass was black. On his death on January 12, 1910, the Muscogee Phoenix Journal wrote of him, In the early history of Oklahoma, the name of Bass Reeves has a prominent place among those who enforced order and law. He was one of the greatest heroes and peace officers of the American West. Yeah.